crunch some numbers and tell us how many of our games have gone to overtime. (laughs) Given the numbers, that's not always going to be in-game numbers. It's just numbers in general. Let's get into our ban phase, though, and see what is taken away on the map. Navi, a team that enjoy their more focused target bans, the things more specific to their opponents. In this case, it's going to be the Sledge coming out from secret to start. A ban that is increasing in ban rate, it feels. We saw it banned earlier on against Benja on Kavana. We're seeing it banned in this game as well. And uh, Fadoki, you were saying, well, that was our ban. So uh, thank you very much. I think because of the nay meta that we're in as well, Sledge being as strong as he is, it makes a lot of sense. I think that's the key. We've seen the power of nerds tonight in EUL. We've had so many kills, so much use of clearing utility, and it's, it's absolutely no surprise to see operators that are bringing the nerds taken out. Now, the Twitch ban's an interesting one. We have seen Twitch's pick rate go up since the recent buffs to the Twitch drone, where it can jump, it's uh, got a longer fire range, etc., etc. <laughs> it's becoming more used to take out utility. A little bit of smack in the chat as well. Saying, you guys watched the wrong VOD, clean up the banning the right thing. And they're just playing their analyst. Why not? Analyst and head coach, Titan. It's all his fault, apparently. Is the way things will shape up. However, bans are complete, which means the games can begin. We've had a couple of almost upsets so far today, Ace. Can Secret be yet another onto that long list? I'm going to say that I think Navi will take this one. Um, I think Secret, as Fresh said, have been playing very well. I would expect them to come and make a chat. I just think Navi on Chalet, are, they're, they're just a different kind of beast right now on this map. I think they're, they're very, very difficult to close down. Dorke is a map that he seems to enjoy. He'll get out there, he'll get kills. He's just a bit of a nightmare to pin down here on Chalet. He can be at the right time. Small man being hard to lock down. Fancy that. They have looked like terrors on this map, and it reminded me of back when Thermite, uh, Thermite, when Theme Park used to be a thing, and they absolutely destroyed what we now know as Heroic on that map, if you recall. I think it was like a 7-1 slapping or something. They really gel well and vibe with the new maps, apart from at Valencia back in 2018, when I believe it was Cafe had just been reworked, and uh, didn't have so much success then. A few disagreements behind the scenes about that one, I think, amongst the camp, but they've shown over time, at least I'd say more consistently than not, that they can deal with these new maps. Chalet is definitely in the list. Looking towards Secret, seeing a castle being brought along. I always get excited Under when Rooney. I see a castle. And what does she use, Ace? This is where that saying spawned the first time you said it. it certainly was on Chalet. In come the laser gates. We're gonna it was said with a lot more. It was when you were explaining, because when you explain an operator, it. you get a lot more excited when you explain, because you're like, she's got these things called laser gates. And that was when I was in Sounded bits. nothing like that. It absolutely did. Absolutely I nothing. Could find, I actually took the uh, VOD record in there and got a little like soundboard. I can just press it and you say it. I can do it like laser like, gates. Like you've got your own little ace doll where you pull a string in the back. <laughs> and, this <laughs> and it just says, edge of my seat. Edge of my seat, Des. Laser gates. What else comes out of your mouth sometimes? We need to get them into production. That's absolutely massive. That get was another one. Into production. Edge of my seat. I'd buy, my mum would buy one. <laughs> I hope I'll get gifted one at the very least. I'll send you five. We're trying to get rid of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> into round one we go then. It is Navi versus Secret, shall we? And we are well underway here. It's going to be Master and Office, the first site that Secret will be defending. And right now, Navi trying to get themselves inside the map, trying to find some opening kills. And they're being careful to clear from the bottom down. You can see there's attention being paid all the way from Basement Blur for the time being. He's going to hold on to Solarium. But there's a few castles. They're going to make things a little bit tricky if you will looking to play this as a standard attack. The double window is castled off. Bathroom window, I believe, castled off as well. Aruni gates on piano door and window. So there's a lot in the way to slow Navi down here when it comes to the site. But I tell you what, nothing's going to slow that nade down. It doesn't matter that you don't bring Sledge. There's other people with nades. And Kendrew feeling the full force of Iana's nades there as Doki finds the vertical kill to open things up. Kill onto old teammate in Kendra, of course. Used to be on this lineup for Navi. But Doki, he's having a 14-0 or a 0-4. 14 day and with how this is starting well it's looking like a 14 and 0 one finds itself a triple kill in the first round cutting through secret like they were paper nate to secure the last and a flawless round coming through albeit a disconnect coming in along the way a little bit of a disruption there for secret obviously uh, in the midst we will get gomfy back in asap but it's never going to be ideal when one of your players drops out. That said, do I think that's the difference in Secret winning or losing that round? No, I don't honestly think that. I mean, Doki went absolutely crazy. He gets himself a 3k. Just Doki things. Doki doing Doki things. And the thing is, I think there's, there's maybe a bit of a mental aspect coming into this as well. Because I think if you're a team and you're loading against Na'Vi, I think that question is in the air. 
What's Doki going to do? 14 0 0 14 Doki. What's going to happen? And when he comes in and gets a 3K in the first round, that surely has got to have a word. And, you know, I know these guys are professionals and they don't get, you know, tilted by those things too easily. But once you've got Doki, say, after two rounds on five or six kills, you've got to be thinking, oh dear. And it, it can become a self fulfilling prophecy. You go into gunfights thinking, it's Doki, I'm probably going to lose this. And then you do lose it. You know, and I think you've got to be very, very careful of that approach to the game. It used to be a coin flip as to which one you get, but I feel like someone's gotten tampered with the dice now and it's more weighted towards getting this high fragging Doki out because we've seen him already a couple of times in the stage, hitting big numbers, doing wonders for the team. Unfortunately, Mexico wasn't quite their day as we saw, but hopefully that builds up over time as this team settles in further and further. The thing is, with Mexico... LAN is a completely different ball. Oh, yeah. And it's Look the, at Empire. It's the first time not only the roster's been to LAN, you know, and plenty of the players, it's their first experience or first experience in a long time. And it's not going to be easy to be going to that scale of event and just turning up and performing, no problem. And some teams have done it, some teams don't. I think Na'Vi, given another major, given the SI, I think they're going to be absolutely fine online. I think they just need that experience. And, you know, they don't want to be too hard on themselves over Mexico. I think it's, yep, turn up. We've learned a lot there. So long as we come back stronger. Don't get me wrong. If the next one's not so great, then you start looking at it thinking, mm, this might be a problem. But I think, I think one is fine. I think the only thing they were hard on was that basketball table. Poor thing got collapsed upstairs, as we saw. Had a bit of fun. Either way, you look at it. This rehost should be done in just a few seconds. We can hear all the players flying back into the lobby behind the scenes. We should be able to get back underway with round two pretty shortly. And in case you missed it, welcome to the last game of the evening. Doki did collect himself for 3K. It was a flawless round for Na'Vi. Couldn't find the fifth, as unfortunately there was a disconnect, but things get to press on soon. What I'm excited to see about is the balance of attack and defense on this map as well, because for most teams, attack is the go-to. Like... Rogue, I thought last stage, as much as they were having issues, looked phenomenal on attack on this map. Their game against G2, I remember, which they did lose round seven and round eight. I thought they could have walked away on the winner on. So for a team that's had issues over the last six months or so, that was a really good showing of what they can do on the attacking side. And I think because the map is so linear, it's quite thin, there isn't a whole lot of complication to it. It makes it really easy to see the strengths and weaknesses in teams as well, which I think at the minute is why it's one of my favorite maps to watch as well. We've started to see a bit, it's, it's one of them, like you said, it's just developing a bit more now, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. we've had more time on there, we've seen it, teams have had more time to think, a bit more competitive experience, and it's one of those that just develops. We're getting everybody back into the lobby, we will be uh, back with you as soon as we can be, and I wouldn't expect it to be too long. I can hear players sort of ticking in, in my ears, we will, uh, as soon as we've got all 10, we'll be back with it, but... How many of those dolls have you sold so far? I don't know, I'd have to, uh, I'd have to check the website. <laughs> was it aceofpyroactionman.com or something? That's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great... Honestly, mate, if anyone ever wants to, like... If anyone gets me, like, Siege Secret Santa and the budget allows, I would love... An Ace of Pyrite dog. I'm going to be very street. clear. There are no such things as this. I don't want anybody... There can be. I don't want anybody going wasting their time like trying to find... Not that I think anybody would have any interest. Um, and for that reason, they don't exist. And I would sort me out one. If I asked him and paid him enough, he'd sort me one out. Just for the laugh, it needs to be a thing now, I think. I'm not sure it does. I think it does. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I just follow you around the studio just like, it's absolutely massive, Des. I'm on the edge of a seat, Des. It'll just go on all day. It'll be great. Everyone will be sick and tardy. They'll, they'll be getting ready after the end of the that stage. Just be that, like, string, it's just too much. that string would get cut pretty quickly. <laughs> I can tell you that now. It's um, only word. We're going to be heading back Why is Slebin so blurry? Why is who so blurry? Slebin. Slebin. He's very blurry, isn't he? Needs a little refocus on the camera. And Gonfie's like a man of the night. Look at him. I always like this. I always like looking at the player cams and seeing like the different setups that people play in. Because like, I'm not one that... I know some people who play in like, complete blackout, but Pat I'm Ball not looks that like bothered for that. He comes from a very warm and loving home. I've met Pat Ball's mum. Have you? Yeah, I do. I have at, Mama uh, Bull. Yeah, um, yeah, I met her at uh, one of the UK lands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she said hello when uh, when he was playing there. One, yeah, I think he was. Play it was when he was with Eminem. That whole light like, dressing suggests to me warm, friendly mother. Yeah, she was there. very nice. Yeah, she was very, nice. well. very friendly. Well, you'll need something warm and loving to get back on Chalet. It's nice and cold there. The snow is in full effect, and we are going back in as we hear the sound of the game in our ears. Thank you very much for sticking with us, ladies and gents. It's time to get back underway for round number two. Navi, 1-0 up to start things out. 
as they continue on their attacking side here on Chalet. Secret, they decide to go back to master and office again. Fair enough, they didn't really have what you know what we would probably consider um, a full attempt at that round, really, having lost Gonfi part way through. So I think they're keen to just go there again. Uh, the setup is looking a little bit different, though. Kendrew is not going to bring the castle along this time. They had the castle and the Aruni last time out, but that's not going to be the case this time. So they'll be limited to the laser gates of Keenan to lock down those routes of entry. I'd expect to see them in the same places, and I can see these already doing that for us on two piano window and the piano double door so that's pretty standard just to try and slow down any push in towards that space of the map but Norby never really needed to aggress towards site too much last time they got a lot of the kills on the vertical angles and as they were trying to clear out the map it's just kind of dokey just doing his thing and walking through a team and killing three people on the way through because why the hell not just like what are they called Pins at a bowling alley to knock down, and Doki was the bowling ball. Looking towards that, Aruni still being popular. We see her all the time on this map, especially on this site as well. Often being put on the double doorway that you can currently see it set on heading up and towards uh, Piano. You can have other ones if you want to. Some teams commit quite aggressively up towards the solar hole, put it on both the north side windows. Stack ADSs up there, but that will not be the setup here because those ADSs are inside the Piano instead. One is on the Piano window, and the third one I'm not 100% sure. Likely the single wall actually leading in from uh, the default plant spot, which is often what you see. Serves and blow, looking to get themselves established inside a library as soon as possible. Kendrew's going to be starting things out on the mezzanine as the Wamai, so he's going to hold on to that and just try to prevent this library push, essentially. There's going to be a bit of a duel going on there. Now then, Doki looking to sneak his way up library stairs, potentially, but there is some barbed wire there that might just scupper his ideas. He's not going to be able to move up there quite as quietly as he might have liked, and he's also got Keenan playing there. The nade is going to go out. It will be unsuccessful. Just forces the Aruni to dip back a little bit, but not too much. Keenan having a little peek, see if he can make any sort of challenge onto the Iana underneath, but not at the moment. And it's something that Doki's commented on previously, playing the Iana allows him the freedom to do a lot of things on his own. He doesn't need to rely on the team because he's got the droning capability, he's got the nades, he's got everything he needs to just go in solo, get kills and do what the team needs him to do. Absolutely. I feel like the only thing you're really Ooh. missing, and that was a freebie. He just knew like Kendrew that. was going to peak as well. Did enough to bait the sound out from the barbed wire. Knew that someone was likely to swing into that library hallway and he was ready. Second round in a row that Doki finds Kendry to start things off. And another great start for Navi. Exactly what they needed. They've got the breach open, and this is going well, Des. They're only a minute and a half into the round, and they're making excellent progress on towards Master and Office. The shield in front of us, I was just going to say, needs to get cleared out. In comes the Rotero drone. Doki takes bullets, and it doesn't matter, Des. You just can't stop the man. He is an absolutely unstoppable force when uh, he gets going, and that's three, six in two rounds, and you just start looking at this thinking, this is a Doki day. <laughs> that's four, surely not. Round two could be an ace here. He's on low health. He's looking to aggress towards the bathroom window. The plant is going down. Narvi, they know exactly what needs to be done here and they're not going to sit by and wait for Doki to find this final kill. That's going to be activated and it's all up to Gonfi. One versus five. Now they know where he is as well. Can't imagine they want to donate this one over. There are three of them setting up for the cross angles and sure enough, Saves will lock it down. But another flawless round coming out of Narvi and a Doki multi-kill this time around the 4K. Even without Arijos, just showing absolute dominance from start to finish. The problem there for Secret is that 4K from Dorkit, honestly, Des, if I could use one word to describe it, it'd be effortless. It just, it didn't even seem like that much of a challenge. It was like, Kendry peeks out, he's just right place, right time, gets his kill, he takes a few shots, he just keeps, nobody could stop him. It was just absolutely deadly. And that is seven kills inside of the first two rounds. If that continues, there could be some big numbers thrown up by the Scotsman Doki today, as he certainly seems. It's just this map, Des. It's, it's Doki on Chalet. You can just tell he absolutely loves it when he gets on there and he just plays with a free them. It's just so dangerous. It can be. Well, now we get to try a different site altogether. Bar and Gaming are going to be with the next one that we step into and a nice little sweet replay of that shot that came through. It was a naughty one. And this, in fact, no, this is the one, the one that really kind of settled things up for them as well. Just like you say, effortless the best way. Two from the same position. One where he baited out Kenny. Just 
dare I say, pretty much all those kills were Secret swinging into Doki or stepping into his line of fire. He didn't have to go really looking for those kills. They came to him. That's it, and you can't feed a player like Doki. You know, he doesn't need an invitation. He certainly doesn't need it serving up on a plate. Uh, so it, it, just continuing to, to peek and challenge onto him is, is always going to be asking for a problem. But this time, as you said, change of sight. They're going to be heading down to bar and gaming. They've tried top four twice. They had Gonfi drop out in the first round. So granted, fair play. Let's go there again, see if we can do it with our full team for the full round. They couldn't, so they're going to mix things up. We've got the mirror down there as well, just to try and hold on to split there and just prevent anybody getting into that default plant spot. That's something that we'll need dealing with. Um, we do have the Maverick on side of Blur, and one way we've seen that dealt with, Des, is to get up on the main stairs and just open up. Uh, you can open up a little bit of a hole in the reinforced wall that leads into split, and it does make it very difficult for players to stay in there. Wants to be at least to the start. A solo take to work their way down through the entire map. It's one of the more expansive clears that you will see. Baron Gaming, of course, being down to the southwest on the ground floor. Or is this at the very least to start you out on the second floor up towards the north side? And you then have to work your way forwards. Time then becomes the, the essence for a team like Navi, I think, to make sure you're moving forward still at good pace. Drones come swinging through, shot out just a couple of seconds later. So Navi know where that kind of first line of resistance begins for secret and don't want to take too long to start contesting it. Lots of drones racing around, including one that's been captured by Gonfi on the mozzie, so he's going to be feeding as much information back into his team about the attacker's progress as they are gaining whilst they're drawn across the top there. Keenan's going to try and hold on to Mezzanine, but Doki once again is looking to get aggressive. He's just slowed by that laser gate for the time being. He's just going to keep that angle into library, see if he can pick up anybody on the rotates or the movement again, but there are two now locked onto library stairs. Keenan's still holding on to that angle. Doki needs to be careful careful about how far he pushes forward here and he does get punished as Slebin finds a big opening kill for Team Secret. I did think to myself then you've got nades in the back pocket where are they not coming from but he was too convinced that a gunfight was the right way to go against the shield and unfortunately does lose out and Secret having found that first kill drawn in some extra nades drawing in some flashbangs opt to back themselves away back down library stairs they go and look to now sit on site good start for Secret and Navi have now got to pick up the pace. Keenan's going to take a little bit of damage, but he's not going to retire all the way back to site yet. Just dropping himself into library and holding on to that for the time being. Quite an important position, library. Vertical above the site. There is some soft floor angles that can be used, so they certainly won't want to give it up without a fight. And they haven't. Kendrew drops back down. Keenan will remain up there for the time being to continue fighting. There's going to be a kill coming in from Slevin onto Nath. So, fortunately for Na'Vi, it's actually secret, uh, secretly that's got the diffuser in hand. So so that is not in no man's oh, hand, and that's an gone. absolute freebie for Blur onto Gomfi there. We're just counting on no one pushing their way down the stairs, but finally Blur will be stopped in his tracks. The Terminator falls as Kendrew also falls in, in at the same time, secretly to close things out. Three rounds on the bounce for Na'Vi, and that round looked a little bit dicier than the first two, but they still get the job done. I'm sure that Heroic and the Heroic fans are going to be watching this one and rubbing their hands at the minute. You know, we have to remember that first matchup today when we look towards the end of the stage and the season and those relegation battles. Heroic, they're going to be trying to fight their way out of there and they are currently seven points from safety now and every match that Team Secret and Rogue fail to secure points in is as much of a victory to Heroic as their own wins and their own points gained will be. And... They had a great performance against BDS and they certainly made us think that there is the potential there for them to be picking wins up. So at the minute, this one looks like it's going strongly in the favour of Na'Vi. Now we have them on the attack on Chalet. The attackers do seem to be having the run of things recently on this map. So, But if Na'Vi can get a 5-1 or even a 6-0 half, Des, I just don't see Secret coming back from that. That's the problem, right? It is going to be a real war here. And about as free as it gets. Gonfi thinking he was safe down in the basement. As mentioned, I think he assumed someone pushed down library stairs and immediately be turning their attention in towards the site. Blur, I think, either had the intel from drones or just the intuition of what was going on here. And here's that wonderful little trade. Sees the man inside split, pulls down to get the spray off and does connect onto Kenny, who's in close range, leaving only one remaining and ensuring that was still three men left alive for the side of Na'Vi by the time that round closed out. 
Round number four, we'll see Team Secret defending kitchen and dining then this time. They're going to still, again, try to keep hold of that top floor. Top floor and chalet, very, very important. Often fought over. Master and office will be much of the battleground here as Na'Vi get in and try to clear out those defenders who will look to hold the site with vertical angles. And then when it comes into the late round, quite often you'll see the wall between main door and dining breached open. And then the plant attempt will come down just inside of of dining but to start with Navi they need to get themselves established inside of the map and they need to find some kills up on this top floor Keenan and Kendrew will be immediately in the scopes looks to be a little bit of a change as well where you've seen all of secrets set up super heavy inside of piano expecting a library push Navi has said okay well we've done that once already it was a not so much a struggle, but we know we've kind of exhausted that choice. Let's push instead from the north side. So you've got four players all pushing around Solar. You had Saves pushing in from West Main. So the big focus is instead up towards this north, northwest side to try and get your push going through. And Doki, I think you've opened that window, may have found himself a freebie, but wasn't in a position to do so at the time. In go the flashbangs and just trying to support that Navi push a little bit. They've got control over Solarium stairs below this time, unable to land his shots and takes about 50 H HP of damage there for his trouble not able to make that long angle pay for the time being. Doki just holding on to the piano window for the time being and Kendrew actually roaming away from it at the minute. There comes in the drone, going to spot Kendrew out but he's going to keep himself locked away from that window and just keep himself safe for the time being. You just feel like the, the sort of snare is starting to tighten here for Na'Vi. It's a very patient game being shown. It's the best way I'd describe it by secret as well. Not looking to give up ground or back away at the first sign of resistance but in a position where... You know, they're not over-challenging, they're not peaking as they did in the first couple of rounds that donated Doki a bunch of kills, as we commented on. Enough to let Na'Vi know they're there, but not getting hyper-aggressive, and that's a good opening kill coming in for Keenum. Taking down Doki, and that is exactly what they needed. Blur manages to find one onto Kendrew, however, to level things up, and he's put in those few hit points that he has left to great use, but that will be the end of them as Keenan finds the kill, but saves and secretly at the same time get in. And how many times have we seen this from saves? There's not coming in with big flashy plays, not necessarily with the 4Ks and the Aces, but just getting essential kills at the right time when Na'Vi need them to swing around. I can't count how many times we have seen saves get in and do that and that now leaves us in a three versus two. Na'Vi plenty of time here, 34 seconds left to go. Packbull and Gonfi forced all the way back into dining and that is going to be Packbull picked up and the toxic babe canisters go with him, allowing secretly to think about a plant but no, he finds the vertical angle that he'd opened up seconds earlier and shuts down Team Secret in round four. Na'Vi starting to run away with this one. Very comfortable round once again. Yeah, although it kind of came down to a point of, well, look, the clock is running down. You're in a three versus two. They've got sight control. They know where you're pushing from. It looked to be pretty comfortable. And I assure you it is not Team Vitality taking a break. It is indeed Team Secret. Uh, the ones who need to have a good conversation because they cannot piece together a single round right now, Ace. It's it's not looking good. And even at moments when it is, I will give it to them. They look like they've adapted a little bit as well. That round there with Keenan sat in a corner. I mentioned about them. Look, they're not trying to swing or peak everything. They're just saying, look, hold the ground. Don't give it up, but be in a position to be able to challenge here. And it was kind of our Na'Vi's misdrawing. They didn't realize where Keenan was or what it was he was capable of doing. But even with that momentary disruption, they still managed to swing things back quite convincingly when it comes around to the end. Nate for both of those kills from the vertical in a number advantage situation. What more can you really ask for? More and more dominance from the side of Na'Vi. And I, all four of these rounds so far have not found themselves going below three members being left alive at the very end. That just shows how dominant they've been so far, Race. It certainly does. There's uh, not really been been two teams in this at the minute you know we have to we have to call it as we see it unfortunately sometimes and right now for Team Secret they are on the ropes and Na'Vi they're lining up a big knockout punch and you know it's on its way Des it's already been thrown it's heading for them and it's going to take some serious movement from Secret here to avoid it I know what's going on Medix has sacrificed one of the, his ace dolls that he bought he bought the, one of the first 10 ones off the production line as well sacrificed it to keep us away from overtime it makes total sense that like the man's already endured a couple today don't jinx it he says to me in my ear that means we're going all the way. <laughs> it's too late, man. Too late. It's too late for that. This is the secret. The thing is, what was the team? There was a team in stage two that was down 4 I want to say it was secret. They were down 4-0. They called the timeout and came back and just swung it through to overtime. At the minute, I, I I'll be honest. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Des. At the minute, 
that's going to be a big ask for what we've seen so far because, as I say, Secret just not really competitive. They managed to get the opening kill the last time around. I think they got themselves to uh, four versus three and then it was just completely swung on its head. Those couple of kills come in from Secretly and saves and Na'Vi, they're just on one of those days where everybody's firing, everybody's chipping in. You've got Doki coming in big with seven kills so far, but overall, it doesn't matter whether he's... he's getting them or not, because if not, somebody else is coming in. And that's what we've been saying about Na'Vi for the longest time, Des. We've been saying what happens on the days where, or the rounds where Doki doesn't get the kills, we need others stepping up. And I love to see that that's what is starting to happen. And Na'Vi could be a real terrifying force if they can do that consistently. And they've leaned into playing six frags a couple of times throughout this game, I think. And in fact, no, I've been baited by the by the visual bug saying six. Oh. They're still four on side. Remember me saying this before, was that you were like... Oh, it baffled me. They've got eight frags. I was like, wait, wait, what? what? In this meta? It baffled me. <laughs> It no. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me in the meta that we've seen today. Um, grenade kill after grenade kill. We've seen one from Doki so far in this game as well. But we're going to head into round five. It's going to be back up to Master. We've seen Team Secret try to defend this site twice, round one and two, unsuccessfully. Um, as that pretty much goes without saying, there are zero rounds on the board so far for Secret. But this may well be the one. Master is generally the primary site choice. It is considered one of the strongest on the map. And right now... Navi, they're trying to get themselves in towards the library again. Okay. Dorky taking a lot of damage, but ah. Boer stepping in beautifully. He's got his buddies back, and he's going to shut the man down with a headshot on the blue stairs. Beautiful as well. The Nook as well, no chance that it's coming in. Easy collect. Sleven shutting down Doki a couple of seconds later. Just balance things back out into a four versus four. So not quite the control that no, that Navi were looking for, but at least they've got themselves some headway into the map. And oh, saves upstairs on the longer angle from Library straight the way through. They should have anticipated that. Might find a second Keenan going low, but does manage to dodge away with about 50 HP still to his name. Once again, saves coming in when Na'Vi just need that little boost in the mid round and to get that man advantage, he finds himself a kill and he just does it so well. Keep an eye on saves and you will see that happening repeatedly. His kills quite often come around the mid to late round and they really can be momentum shifting. Now Blur, he's going to just work on the knock towards that office door. Just get it on the drones for the moment. Try and find out exactly who is playing where. Pipeball is just inside that office door, but the breach will force him back. That's going to head all the way back towards Master the door. He's going to look to deploy those toxic babe canisters from range, but it's secretly getting in with the kill onto Slebin, and that leaves just Packbolt and Keenan with 56 seconds to kill. There is an age on the clock for Na'Vi. It's just the fact that even when down to the back line of secretly being your support player, still stepping up and picking up four kills so far in the game. It's ludicrous. Like, from start to finish, you're just seeing the kills raining through, secretly planting it just inside the breach here rather than under the half wall. That's how confident they are, and now you get a much wider view range of that diffuser and much easier time of denying secret getting away with disable. It's a trade-off. You know, you're under much less cover. It's much more dangerous. But in a 4v2 with Na'Vi hitting shots like this, as you say, feeling confident in their ability to do it, Blur almost misses his shots as Packball sprints past faster than I think he planned on, but manages to find them nonetheless. Nerth will pick up the last man, and that is going to be Keenan downed and Team Secret struggling to find one in the first five rounds. I think you used the word well earlier, effortless is the best way to describe it. It's looking clinical for Na'Vi, you know, kill a couple of people, walk in, plant, end of round. And they've only planted once in the five rounds, to be fair. The rest of it has just come to, let's just walk in and kill people. There's been a couple of places where some more, should I say team, team-wide players required, such as that pushing from Doki and Blur at the start of the round, one coming in from game, uh, one coming in from Mud and finding the trade kill immediately afterwards. That's, that's worked out okay for them. But you're seeing on the other side for Secret House, since that rehost after round one, there's, what, five kills between them all? It's not a pretty start. Not at all. And I say a pretty start, we're now almost halfway through, if not more so. That's the problem. You, you get to the point of feeling that, and, you know, nobody's ever done in Siege. We've seen it brought back from the absolute brink, you know, time after time in big tournaments, we've seen it happen. But right now, with the way Secret are playing, you look at it and you think, can they turn over a 6-0 half? I don't think they can turn over a 5-1 half at the minute. There's a, a really tall order in front of them. We're going to have to see one of those situations where a team just comes out in the second half and just looks completely different, Des. You know, we do see it occasionally. We see that performance just completely mutate, but it really is going to take something on that sort of scale here for Team Secret because no matter what they do, it just doesn't seem to slow down Navi at all. The problem solving and the kill finding is off the chart for them today. 
partners. Well, let's see how this round plays out. It is their last defensive round on the side of Secret. Bar and Gaming is going to be where they stage their last bastion of defense. Nothing massive worth noting in terms of their setups. They brought Alibi an awful lot. Kai being the main change that has come through here, alongside the mirror that we saw earlier on on the Bar and Gaming defense, at the same time with the Mute musing, uh, moving over to replace the Mozzie of Gonfi. So a couple of changes coming in, nothing groundbreaking. Safe's holding the angle onto the piano window there from the rooftop, just looking to maybe catch anybody out who strays a little bit close. They'll get the legs taken down if they is an opportunity. Doki's going to be moving in quite quickly and they're pretty confident now that there's nobody inside a piano. They've got the angle held down if there was and Doki's free to get that Gemini clone out and saves. has just switched his attention towards the library stairs now but Sleben is tantalising as it might look. He's not going to step far enough forward, is he? Oh, oh come on Sleben. You've got a deployable shield for a reason there. You've got to keep your legs behind it. Kayak already fell foul of that in an earlier game and Sleben nearly goes down as well. Keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times, but that vehicle is going straight down to hell. But Sleben's alive with about, what, 15 HP to his name? Enough that he can still sit and play behind the shield. He won't be too worried, but as more grenades start swinging through, that's when the worry has to grow, and it's secretly to start off a kill onto Keenan. It has just been not been going well. They've had two rounds where they found the opening kill on Secret, but they've still got on to lose. How do you think rounds play out when they lose the opening kill? The danger here being that Sleben, of course, is super low health after that challenge as well. Kendrew's going to take a bit of chip damage from a grenade there but nothing too major so he's going to find himself back onto site and Pipeball finding a beautiful shot there onto the head of Doki up through that vertical angle got to remember they work both ways and Pipeball proving that with a plum there as he manages to find the Scotsman and take him out of the round four versus four now as Secret managed to get a bit of momentum inside of the round but Blur he puts a halt to that as he finds a kill onto Sleben trading out what Pipeball had already done and keeping us at three to three in the round I just find it ludicrous that with Blur you can stick him on a more defensive role like a Maverick and he'll still do all the work you needed to and some more. Gonfi down to about 60 HP. A couple more bullets will be enough trying to get the flank off and Blur is playing a bit of a ring around the roses with him. Blur's now left in the one versus two. No diffuser in hand, only 45 seconds still to play. Probably going to try and play for the recovery but of course it's got to worry about Kendrew sat in behind this mirror window on site and also about the man playing on the downstairs. Those gunshots should be enough notice for Gonfi on the downstairs that is coming. So this should be the decisive 1v1. The big question was whether Blur knew about Gonfi's presence. Now he knows exactly where he is. He can move around with a pre-fire potentially. He knows he has to take the reload, but that gives Gonfi the same opportunity to set his feet. Going to take that default cam out. Can he win this? Yes, finds the headshot 1v1. There's 15 seconds know. left to go. Surely he knows where the last man is. He's going to be in split all day long. I don't know if he's got time to get this diffuser or to go for the challenge. Oh, he's going to no. try, but unless the hatch is open, there's absolutely Absolutely no chance it is not. He's not going to be dropping into sight and that is going to be the round over for Blur as he doesn't have the time he needs to get the diffuser. He doesn't make the challenge onto Kendry. I mean, to be honest, he was probably on a losing battle anyway. If you move in towards sight there with Kendry behind a mirror window, there's only likely to be one winner. And Secret managed to put a few smiles on a few faces as they get the first round on, shall we? You got to have you got a smile about something, Ace. It may as well be the one round that you might find yourself getting throughout the entire game because now Navi switch over to playing on the defense, starting inside of Master and Office. And yes, Chalet generally has shown, you know, good leaning towards teams that can attack well. And Secret has shown historically on this map where they've won it twice that they can attack it pretty well. I just worry about how you're going to fare against the prowess of a team like Na'Vi and how electric they look today. Well, the way that I look at it, when a team goes 5-1 and a half and move on to the defence, there's I look at it and I think, can I honestly say that there is not one site on this map that Na'Vi are going to be able to lock down? Because if that, just one site, that's all they need. Because they go there once, they rotate away, they come back there for a second time two rounds later. That, that's all it's going to take. It's just one of these sites for Na'Vi to get it locked down. So I look at that and I think right now, I can't honestly say that that's going to be the case. So secret right now, they just need to view this as one round at a time. There's no point thinking about the fact that they need six rounds back to back to win this. There's no point thinking that they've only got one mistake to make and five will get them to overtime. They just need to think about round seven and round seven only. It's one of them holes again that we see sometimes coming out from teams that like to extend down towards the south. G2, Citizen in particular, always remind me of playing Shields out here on Mezzanine, FMG Smoke, looking to contest down towards the south. Just a little bit more commitment here coming out of the side of Na'Vi, committing themselves an ADS, oh, sorry, the Thunderbird down there. They've got the mirror on the wall, the reinforcement stacked up, so they do want to play Mezzanine. The secret, it seems to be their go-to aim of attack is going to be the north side, though a solar push is on the agenda. 
We've Slabin. seen this a few times with bucks underneath, haven't we? We certainly have. Slebin just trying to get in there with the buck. Uh, but go. that being said, there's nobody on side to stop the flank this time. You'd quite often have it paired up with a Nomad, so the air jab can go to the bottom of West Main just to give the buck a little bit of security down there. But I don't think that Na'Vi have got anybody in a position to challenge on the roam as it is anyway. So we've got the vertical angle opened up. Now, we have seen this actually double down on. You can shoot all the way up to the ceiling above and open up exactly there. You can open up the floor in there and prevent the rotation into bathroom as well. It's not something that Slebin has done just yet, um, but it may well be something that follows later into the round. But for the time being, the player on Solarium saves in this case. Needs to be careful of exposing himself to it. that angle. He wants, he, he wants to go for it, doesn't he? He does, but think about how much time he wastes just being sat there as well. The drones are sitting there, know that he's sat there and he's stuck, but it's like a stalemate in, stalemate in chess where no one can really make the other move. He's happy to just sit here and waste a lot of time for And They've still got two or three drones circling around him. They know he's there, but until they commit frag grenades in, for example, it'll be hard to remove. They've still got four of those on side, burning through the ADS. There's tons of flashes coming in. Out comes another magnet, the grenade over the top as well, but Save's not going down. There's two on these windows just trying to take him out. And he's sat there flashing, still finding himself alive, slowly being tagged out. But look at the clock ace. He's wasted 100 seconds, sat on these stairs, and God knows how much utility. An awful lot as now an explosive charge comes in from the Zafia as well and still doesn't finish, what? saves off, and he gets the kill! Headshot onto Slebin through the reverse vertical angle. Nath manages to find Pack Bull, and all of a sudden, Na'Vi are in a 5v3, and they just exploded into round seven. The U.S. definitely isn't alone, by the way. He's also got Nath looking to give some support. Gonfi coming around the corner, he lies down, and Say still wins it! Talk a to me about kill saves. From Talk to me. stairs, and there's one man on the rappel who's got to back away. Secret through, not just the kitchen sink. They threw the whole house at him there. The grenades, the flashes, the impacts from Zofia, and still could not make him move. And now he's just going to run round. He's going to collect up those corner stations. There's, he's going to juice himself back up, and he's going to continue in the fight because that's exactly what Saves does. And what a performance he's had today. Some critical kills, and they are just so well played on Solar. I cannot shout about that enough. Kendrew coming up the stairs chooses not to take the default cam because he wanted to have exactly that response the surprise onto blur that finds him the kill secretly finds one kendrew manages to get himself a second onto saves but probably too little too late 10 seconds left to go one versus three shut down by doki in the bathroom and that's going to be narvi putting themselves onto match point six one saves the hero in solar Man. unbelievable unbelievable play we talk about him a lot on the flank on attack, you know. It's the sort of thing that Prano used to do in Old Secret, back when he used to be the Zofia player for them, would be the one who would come in lurking off from a side angle and kill two or three people. Here, it's very much saves doing the similar sort of thing on the attacking side, but on defense, made himself the main man in the thick of the action and did tons of work. Na'Vi sit at 6-1. One. one more round, and as you mentioned, they can cycle through the next two. Not a bother. They can fluff that up as much as they like. But I guess in my mind, a win here and now is what they're looking for. 7-1 is a very decisive statement after how back and forth some of the games have been today. Yeah, that's absolutely what it's all about for Na'Vi now. It's about making a statement. A it's message. about, as you say, you know, sending fear out ahead of them towards that play day on Thursday and beyond. You know, they want teams coming in, worrying who about... Do they, who do they play on Thursday? It just starts to become a big mental game. It plays into the map bands. Who's going to want to play Na'Vi on Shalley now? You know, <laughs> we knew that they were a good team on there and they've just come in and dominated again. And it's going to get to a point that they know teams are going to ban Shale. So as soon as you know that teams are going to ban Shale, you can start predicting the rest of the map ban and you can start manipulating it into your favour. You know what I'd love to see? Rogue to bring Na'Vi to Chalet on Thursday. That's the game that plays out. And I, like I said earlier on, I actually think Rogue are a pretty good Chalet team. Better than Na'Vi? Not too sure about that, but it would be a great match to watch. It certainly would be, but I'm not sure that anybody's going to be challenging Na'Vi on Chalet. Where else do they go, though? Stay. Like... Na'Vi wouldn't take them to, say, club, and I can't imagine you'd see Coastline being a map between the two. I think That's, you'd probably see something like an Oregon. I reckon Chalet's card. I think you'd probably see something like an Oregon. I reckon, I reckon Chalet, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll stake some claims on it. The safety I'll bet you, I'll bet you my, like, limited edition Ace of Pyrite doll. <laughs> Very good of you. Did I sign that one for you? No, you didn't. It's, Did just, it's just got a gold, like, shiny oh, head you, in it. It's because you don't deserve it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please sign it for me. Right, number eight is going to be Na'Vi's first opportunity to get this one closed out. They're going to be looking to get it done sooner rather than later. It's one of those where it feels like the match is done and they'll want to get it really sealed the deal instead of playing with the food here too much. Kendrew moving in towards Westman, looking to find anybody who's out on the roam. Drone running ahead of him, I think, and just providing a little bit of information. A E1D scan comes in from Keenan. 
Oh, there we go. Slabin's going to pick up saves, and that is a big opening kill. He's gone in through the snowmobile garage and managed to find the alibi, and saves have been going really well so far today. Had some really big moments, so I'm sure that is going to do wonders for the confidence of Secret inside of the round. It maybe opens up an opportunity for them here. I hope so. You see a lot of teams doing that as well with the Bucky, where you open up the Somerville garage, you go up main stairs, you can then assault quite comfortably onto the mezzanine without exposing yourself to the front door. So it's uh, normally quite viable, but in that case, saves with the one getting caught out and unsuspecting of what was coming his way. With the line on side as well, have everyone has to freeze for a second. It's like you're about to start doing the whole everybody clap your hands, but no one's there to clap any hands. Five versus four for Secret, and as we get that halfway mark in the round, they still need to get Blur off this mezzanine. He's got the shield, he's got the reinforcements, he's got the ADSs, he's got everything to support him playing around this area, and they still have more spots to slip back to because you've got Nath, for example, at the top of library stairs. Dorky, just aware that this man inside of the closet there, Blur, gets the kill from the mezzanine. As we said, they failed to clear him out, and he manages to make them pay for it with a headshot. Packbull does manage to shut Doki down. It was actually Keenan who was pushing in from the closet area there, but Packbull will team up with him and manage to find Doki. 55 seconds left to go. Four versus three. Secret do have everything they need here. They just need to start thinking about clearing this mezzanine. They can't really push forward until they've got rid of Blur. The thing is, he's kind of crawled his way back into his old stomping ground as well. He's back on mezzanine now after he initially got forced back up towards the library hallway. Kendra's looking to press his way in up here from the north side. You've still got Nath at the top of library. Papal on the downstairs looking to make a plan happen. I don't think they know that Blur's got back here. He could play spoiler if they're not careful. He really could, and that's exactly what he's waiting to do. He sees the man completely unaware. Blur gets one at the same time. It's actually, sorry, secretly, who gets one downstairs. Blur locks it up, and that's going to be two versus two. And as you say, just playing spoiler. Oh, the ping comes out as well as the alibi decoy is shot at. Blur, he's just going to get himself back to sight. Seven seconds left to go. Smart play from Na'Vi. Nice Pack ball gets one, one Ooh, B2. Good. Gomfi finishes it in the nick of time. Secret managed to put a second round on the board. And Na'Vi, I'm guessing they'll give some wear else a try. And yeah, maybe so. As you mentioned, we get back round to Master and Office and suddenly it's a different conversation. Some allowance being given to the whole hold came through on the stairs from saves. It wasn't really about the site choice itself in that round. It was more the position where the defence was being established. But kitchen and dining going to be where round number nine takes place. It will be our battleground. And as we've seen previously, that can be a very similar setup to what you have when you're defending Master and Office. So maybe we see again, Na'Vi commit to holding the solar stairs, or maybe they go to try and play entirely vertically, but a little bit more defensively. We'll find out once we step into the round. And we will be stepping in any second now. We've got the operator selections coming through. It's going to be kitchen and dining. Saves taking the key this time. So going to likely play to just block off the wall between main door and dining. I would expect that to be electrified, possibly a hatch um, alongside it. We'll see where that utility gets itself placed. We can see saves is already there, reinforcing the wall that I was talking about. And I would expect that to be electrified. Going to be a hold up in library and solarium from Navi. I would expect Nathan just opening up the long angle there to the bottom of Solarium Stairs. And um, that will allow challengers through sight if needed from there. And then we're going to have Dorky moving upstairs as well. I just remember Pasha from Verdus Pro hitting some naughty shots from inside of dining and kitchen. When um when I think who was it, it was they were against. Someone came pushing in from trophy and he sprayed them down at long range, swung across the solar stairs, and killed the next man pushing down. It was like, my God, he makes this look so, so easy. And it's the same holes that you're seeing here, like you mentioned, the long ones that span much of that bottom floor and give you the long angles up towards the north side. That assumes Secret are going to push on the north side because they could just say, let's go via the main door and just open up the wall and try and go for a plant instead. Gomfi finds Doki and it's... Uh, it's been a quiet number of rounds, really, for the Scotsman. He started out strong, and since then, it's sort of fell quiet. Secret starting to pick up a bit of pace here. They've done very well with the drones, particularly Des. They've only lost uh, one or two so far. I think we've got nine left overall. So, yeah, they've only lost one. They've got seven out there active in the map. So there's going to be an absolute ton of information being fed back in. Secret really should have a very clear picture of what is going on inside of the map here. They should know exactly where those defenders are. They finally lose another one, leaving us with eight drones. But in comes the work on to the the office wall there, just getting it open. Pipeball on the Maverick just to chase away secretly who was playing inside of office. And this is all about pushing Na'Vi back to Solarium and forcing them down and back under into sight. 
Nice clean big square being open to give them some of that more head level height challenges if they want to as well. Otherwise, you can't see through the breach over the top of the half wall. And guess what? You end up a little bit stuck. So they're in a position where they can at least see that much deeper into sight if they want. And they're thinking about, OK, well, how do we get our way in here and start making the push forward? Let's not forget it's not about the plant on the top floor. We are downstairs in kitchen and dining. So you've got to worry, OK, you're focusing on the top floor, but half the round is now gone and you still need to get control. Certainly do need to get control. I'm just keeping an eye on Blur, who appears to be all the way down in basement. And once again, it's just the question of whether Secret have picked him up. I've commented on the fact that they've got a lot of drones left, as but are they using them effectively? We will tell in time as to whether they know Blur just keeping himself stock still for a couple of seconds while that E1D scan passes. Gonfi with a nade on to saves. So they really are going to need some saving Ooh, here. Nath with a naughty shot onto the head of Pipeball there on the vertical angle, shutting the man down three versus four and just keeping Na'Vi in touch now secretly looking to move upstairs Blur as well manages to make a challenge but shut down by Slevin at the top of library stairs reads him a story and tucks him in for the night there as Nath gets downed and then it's now four versus one four versus none as Kendrew Slevin they finish things off and that's going to be secret finding another one and they are in their way back to this but but Na'Vi they can now double down on master and office and you bet your damn Heine that's exactly where they're going to step into for this round number 10. And even after that, we'd have two more chances to get it right. The secret to pull off five rounds back to back and to get themselves through into overtime would be absolute madness. We said after six, look, they're rolling their way through. It was six and one after seven. We were like, look, Navi are just on a different level today. This shouldn't really be a challenge. But secret somehow are finding that way back in. Three more rounds, Ace, and we're guaranteed our third overtime of the night. Certainly are fighting the way back, but this is going to be the biggest challenge yet. It fits, it works quite nicely for Secret. They've managed to get themselves momentum. They've got themselves a couple of rounds. At least you're not coming into this cold now. They're hitting the shots. They've found some nade kills. They, you know, they're working nicely now, and maybe that's just what they needed. But one thing they do need to figure out is how to get rid of saves. The thing is, there's, I feel like they could probably play it the same way and saves actually dies. You know, he was an absolute fraction away from death last time. He played it beautifully, but there was a bit of luck thrown in there as well with his, you know, how close a couple of those explosives came to him, a couple of feet more, and that's it. You're out of there. And all of a sudden, it's a very different team secret push at that point. That is if they want to hold this, which it looks like they don't, given they're committing a lot of resources down towards the south. I'm not but, surprised. I'm not yeah. surprised with, with what I've just said about no. about the fact that it, you know, it, it should be reasonably easy to do the same thing and get rid of serves. Two ADSs there, the mirror being parked up as well. Just lots of setup going on that way. And this is an interesting one, the downstairs, mm. enable them contesting towards lobby. Just stops the push coming up on the south stairs, I guess. An angle that Na'Vi used quite aggressively when they were the ones on the attack. Nobody down there to play it at the minute. I think secretly had just dipped away after getting that in position. So we'll see if anybody rotates onto that mirror at any point. But Team Secret making quick progress here, straight onto the Solarium windows. It's the position that we saw Pipeball playing last time around. And as we say, we, he was held at bay by saves on those Solarium stairs. But this time around, Na'Vi just choosing to mix things up. They don't want to get predictable. Slebin this time instead opening the angle all the way up um, that I spoke about to the bathroom door there. Just looking to catch anybody as they may maybe try to make a rotate. We're a minute in, and Team Secret, they are heavily favoring the Solarium side at the minute. It's what made me a little bit nervous, is you've got that one inside of dining that's looking down towards the south. It's just kind of exposed to someone pushing in from the north side, for example, getting in trophy and then working their way southwards a little bit. And a lot of their utility has been committed on mezzanine, so it's almost like Na'Vi are fully expecting and committing to Secret having a south side take. They come from the north, and suddenly that completely changes things. And by the looks of it, with four players up here on the north side, only Keenan currently off on the far roof, and even and then he's looking to challenge onto the bathroom window. This is an all side take for Secret. I'm not sure we're going to see Na'Vi prepared for it. I don't think so at all. We try to see saves try to spoil the party there, but shut down by Kendrew. Pipeball does take an awful lot of damage in the meantime, but has got himself in. Boots on the ground established. However, Nath takes a quick peek. Kendrew can't cover that angle, and Pipeball will be shut down. That puts the diffuser down cold in no man's land inside of Solarium. One minute 15 left to go, and Team Secret need to get themselves established inside of the map all over again. Nath could pay the price. That one was close and Team Secret have just been a little bit unlucky with the explosives at times tonight. But Kendrew, he manages to finish the kill off and that's now four versus three. Here they come on the pushing from Solo, but it's Doki fighting one back, bringing down Slebin. The three versus three steps in as we enter that final 60 seconds. The Lion Scan coming through. Secret press on forward. Na'Vi rooted to the spot at least for a few seconds. 
And now Kendra's in a great spot. He could try and go for a plant here if he wants, but it looks like kills might be the name of the game. Does he know about the man coming up on the window? If he doesn't, this could be a nasty bite back. There's two or three of Navi members playing here, but it's a triple coming out for Kendrew as the players all around Piano get slaughtered down. And Secret have gone past the breaking point, Ace. They've won the Master and Office attack. And now you wonder, which way does this game go? That was always going to be the sticking point, potentially, for Team Secret coming in there and getting that one done. But... They've managed to get it over the line, and I tell you what, the confidence is building inside of that team. You can see it on the faces of the players. There's a lot of smiles, and there's a, a lot to be grateful for in the Team Secret camp as the minute as they fight their way back to 4-6, and faces looking a little bit more stoic on the side of Na'Vi at the minute. Understandably, imagine coming into a game where you're 6-1 up, and then suddenly things have been pulled back down to where we are now at 6-4. All the momentum sat with Secret. They've won four of the last five rounds. You're unable to really piece together a convincing round. I wouldn't even say the rounds have been super close. It's been relatively dominant by Secret. It has. The last few, certainly. They've seemed to have a good read on everything that Na'Vi are doing. They've seemed to be ahead of the game as to where they are. They've been hitting with explosives. They've been using the drones very well. As I've said, it's very clear that they've known exactly what's going on in front of them. They know what the game plan is. They know where everybody is. We've seen a lot of vertical use, a lot of nades from underneath, and just doing big damage to players like that. And I commented on it. Coming out of the prep phase in the last round, there was nine drones still alive. Na'Vi just not managing to shut down that information game. I attribute a lot of it to the Lion, to be honest. Whenever Secret looks to try and make their push forward, that's when you see the change coming through. They'll push their way in, they'll look to go aggressive, they'll call in the Lion, so Na'Vi can't move. There's no swings, there's no aggression coming out of them, which means Secret can take ground that they want. And in that last round, the great example was Kenny getting inside of the small like box room attached to Master, which got him the freebies off the back of it. The Mozzie now stepping in for Blur, not stacked up alongside a mute, mind you, does maybe suggest they're leaning in towards denying away more of that information game, a pick that we haven't yet seen seen come out of Na'Vi in this entire half. Yeah, it definitely suggests, you know, as, as we've just discussed there coming in, that it seems like it's been a bit of an issue for them. They haven't been finding the drones. They've been um, certainly getting pinged out, I'm guessing, a lot of the time as to their locations. So they've made that adjustment. They've brought the mozzie along, and we'll see just how well they deal with the drones and information side of things this time around. There's still 10 on the board for Team Secret, so none taken out just yet. Uh, but I'm sure as the round goes on, now are going to be looking to improve on that. They are going to be trying to defend this one and just get it over the line. All they need is a second successful defence, Des, and they've got the opportunity to go to master an office again here. Forgive me for being nervous for Na'Vi. I think at this point, even with a timeout, that might just be more ground for Secret to really rally up their ideas and think of even more ways to deny Na'Vi away from a potential fight back in. But it is, as you say, that top side set up, and here we go. They rotate away. They're taking away both of the laser gates they had set up. They're taking away the bulletproof and rotating everything down to the south, it seems. Certainly a brave move this late in the round because that is the risk you take. Nathan just getting a few shots in the back there as he tries to relocate that utility. It comes in from off his door, and he's going to need some serious support if he wants to try and get that applied exactly where they need it. Slebin just looking in through that library window. Not going to find anybody at the moment, and the chip damage onto Nathan probably slightly more than chip damage realistically, is all that we've seen in terms of these two teams meeting each other just yet. Dirk's off on a runabout down into Narnia. See what he can find down there. Hopefully not a lion. I think fortunately, both literally and figuratively, no one is lurking down there on the side of Secret, of course, but he's more using it to get himself to rotate back up to another side of the map. You can see for Na'Vi how all of them are pushed towards the north as well. They know that this push is coming in from Secret, but it's almost like they're... Not so much scared, but looking to play the long range in our game. They don't want to get cheeky and try and get too aggressive. They're saying, look, you want to get the wall open, you go for it. Our aim here is going to be more about the plant denial once you step yourself inside. It certainly does feel like a, a different uh, approach from Na'Vi. They seem to be a little bit less swagger in these uh, in these last few rounds and it's no surprise because secret have really sent a message they're really coming back into this one they've got the breach open into sight there from office wall so the 
Plant spot is open to them. Packbull is in position to potentially try getting that down, but I would suggest they've got a little bit more work to do before they are in a position to do so. Namely, they need to get themselves a couple of kills. We're two minutes in and still five versus five, and that just tells you how tentative this is becoming. Navi not wanting to over-aggress, over-extend, but Gomfi Sleb and double down one apiece. Fine saves and blur. Packbull moves in at the exact moment to get the diffuser down successfully. The Nitro is it finds a kill, but essentially is too slow for what it was intended for, and that was to stop the plant going down. Doki finds one, but Sleben manages to trade it out, and that plant is right on the threshold again, Des. Such a defensible position, and that's exactly what Team Secret are doing. They're going to take us to 12, Des. They're going to find this. It's one versus three, Nath. He manages to find one of the three, but this has got to be called unlikely as he tries to find two more. He's got 10 seconds to do this. It's a big ask right now, challenging the lion inside a library, cannot find him. No chance of getting near that diffuser with the man on the rappel. And there come the shots from Kendrew on a very smart upside down rappel on the balcony, holding a tight angle. And Team Secret, they've brought it back and we're going to 12 days. <laughs> Can we just skip ahead four minutes and just say the line that we know we're going to be saying? <laughs> Des don't. Can we add another line to the little Ace of Pirate right exclusive dolls? We're, We're going, going to overtime! <laughs> It needs that because it's going to go the way. You just get the feeling. And I tell you what, you want to see how rattled Na'Vi are? Look at the site choice. They're going down into the basement. They're not even sticking towards, you know, the sites that we always step into, towards bar gaming, master and office, in towards kitchen. No, this time around we go for the site that most teams would dare not touch. We've seen it employed a few times in APAT North, but never really in EU. Just goes to screen to me how unsure they are, how they've got to pull everything out of the bag here to make this work. A difficult site to defend, uh, we do see that, and I think one of the, the big reasons for that is the, the number of avenues of attack there are. You can open the main breach, you can open the trench wall, you can open the rear wall, you can push down blue stairs, you can push down main stairs. You've got so many angles that need to be covered all at once that if two or three of them are pushed together, you just see the defenders spinning round in all directions. Very difficult to focus and concentrate. I mean, the one positive aspect to this site, I suppose, is there's a lack a vertical like most of the basement sites you're not really worrying too much about what's above you i mean they might be they've committed a little gates. bit in in uh, the snowmobile and behind the sort no, of me you there. don't tend to get defenders playing in that area too no no no. but what i'm excited about here is they've got castles they've got laser gates they've got reinforcements going down both towards the top floor but also on the ground floor if you go down the floor here actually please medics We'll have a look down inside of here. Look, you'll see a couple of setups. So the reinforcement coming in, they've got a castle coming into the double door. They've got laser gates on the front door itself. They're kind of not, I don't want to say playing a full three floor setup just because you've seen a single reinforcement on the top floor, but they are looking to play this kind of all across the map sort of setup. I know for a fact, Fresh will have this one on the breakdown on a pre-show at some point because this one is pretty spicy. Enough so that Doki has found the opening kill onto Slebin before on-site secretly is put down, but not out just yet. It'll certainly be spicy if Na'Vi managed to get the win here. Secretly, as you say, down, but not out at the moment. Keenan just applying pressure. And this hold is all about trying to waste a lot of time here. In comes the nade just a second too late from Gonfi as it will not be able to take the man down and that is secretly back up onto 20 health and another gun restored. Now Packball just trying to use an angle there. He's burnt off the reinforcement but the wall isn't actually open yet. He's just getting peak holes at the moment but this is, it's building what you can see that I was talking about. He's trying to get the number of angles but right now Doki's just going crazy. He's running around the map and just finding kill after kill. Kendrew on seriously low health and it is now 5 versus is three and looking good for Na'Vi in round 12. Don't jinx it too much, Ace, here as well. Out comes the smoke as well. Gonfi inhaling lungfuls of that down to about half HP and forced to step forward up towards the Zulu angle. Should know there's a man holding around to the right hand side, down to the left hand side, sorry, potentially two, with another one also lurking close by in Blur, was secretly being the one who's a little bit closer. Droned out for a second and they've got to make this work. They've got enough time to play with, but not really enough members, Ace. Gonfi, I think, finding himself in no man's land there. That's the only reason that I can think he stayed inside of that smoke. He didn't want to expose himself to the angle from uh, Todoki and Connector there on single door, but couldn't move back through the smoke. I assume he was right at the front edge of the cloud, but secretly he's going to finish that one off. Keenan manages to find the trade, but four versus two, and Na'Vi just looking to bunker down now. I think Kendrew pushing in, but very, very low health. He's on a bulletproof cam. They know his position. Doki with a third. Whoa. But all of a sudden, Ooh. it's a 1v2. It's Nathu manages to finish. 
finish it, but you wouldn't have put it past Team Secret for a second there to bring that one back. you got to give them a round of applause because they played a fantastic game and they made what looked like a run over an entertaining competitive match. Well played Team Secret, but it's Navi who take the result 7-5. As you say, a good fight back from Secret, but the only thing that the standings will remember at the end of the season is 